eternal abode uh, that's spoken of as where God is. And so we need to understand that the heaven is used in those times. But the second day, now, he, he is dividing things up. And so there's an expanse between the waters above and the waters below. Clouds are above, aren't they? And you've got the oceans and such below. Now, there's, there's no land yet. Let's go to the third day. The third day, God gathers up the waters together and makes the dry land appear. And he called the waters seas and the dry land earth. Can you imagine? Uh, never before was there dry land. Now there is. God causes the mountains to push up. Can you imagine the power, the upheaval that's going on at this time? And once there's dry land, now what can you have? Well, you can have vegetation for the earth. And so all in one day... God separates the waters, the dry land comes, the vegetation appears, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Quite a happening. What we want to note is that, that the earth, God, when he created something, it is full grown. And the earth, uh, all those tremendous forces that are going on causes the earth to, to age uh, rapidly, you might say. Can you imagine as the waters are pushing up uh, and ex uh, uh, the land is pushing up and the mountain ranges are appearing and the continents are, are shaping, that, that that is tremendous upheaval and erosion and all these things are taking place that, that scientists want to say took millions of years. God did it all in one day. The same God that could say, light be, could say, let the dry land appear. And it was so. The fourth day now, the fourth day, God makes the great lights to divide the day and night, the sun, the moon, the stars. And that's what he did the fourth day. You might say, well, that's all he did. He made the heavenly bodies. Can you imagine that? We are still discovering how huge the universe is, and yet God spoke it into existence. It's also interesting to note that it was day four that he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. If you look in your, again, in your um, study guide, you'll find in verse 3 of Genesis 1 that starting on the first day, God said, let light be, light be. And yet it's the fourth day before he makes the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now there's a lot of different speculations about that. But I believe it just shows that God intended for it to be night and day. And God, by His special power, the same God that could speak the world into existence, surely could have light in any way He wanted to have it. And so there was light the first day. There was a separation of the cycles that we call night and day. And then in day four, He puts in place the natural things that would then govern night and day, the sun and the moon and the stars. And then the evening and the morning, or the fourth day. And then day five comes along. And day five, God created creatures of the sea and birds of the sky or of the heavens. And he says to them, be fruitful and multiply. Can you imagine a day when, when God makes the whales and the sharks and the alligators and he just named anything of, of creatures of the sea? Uh, well, maybe not alligators. Surely those would be sort of the land down on the sea. But it, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? The birds of the sky. But see, you couldn't make the birds before you had some dry land. land. You can see the, the reasoning, the logic behind the creation if you think about it. And so it says to the, to, to the creatures of the sea, now they've got their oceans to, to um, live in and the land to divide them and the currents to, that, that guide so much of their life. There, it's all in place now. Be fruitful and multiply and the evening and the morning or the fifth day. And one thing we haven't mentioned, at the end of each day, God would look at it and say, it's good. It's good. Imagine God looking at something. That's good. So we know that it was, don't we? Then the sixth day. Here, the sixth day is time now. We've got the creatures of the sea, the birds of the air. Now it's time to create the animals for the earth, the cattle and the creeping things and the beast, all the lion and the rhinoceros. <laughs> you, you just think of all of them. 
they're creeping things, those small little things, I don't know, maybe lizards and snakes and things such as that. And then, last of all, and you can tell from reading the scriptures now that this is a big deal. God creates man. Man is the crowning moment, you might say, of God's creation. It is only of man that the scriptures would say he created him in his own image. And he gave him dominion over the rest of creation. But do you notice um, a little more specifically what God says in verse 26? Then God said, let us make man in our image. Who would be the us? What you have there, you, you have the Godhead. The word uh, God is a plural word, Elohim, and it stands for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We can go to other places in the Bible talking of Jesus, and it would say without him nothing was made that was made. Without Jesus. We already have talked about the Spirit hovering over the, the waters in verse 2. So we have God. We have the Son. We have the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. Can you just imagine being made in the image of God? See, none of the rest of creation had an eternal soul. Only man. None of the rest of the creation had the intelligence, the raising ability. Only man. God made man in his own image. And so he finished then his creation. And then comes day seven. Creation was complete. Man has been made. And God saw that everything that he had made, and he looks at it and he said, indeed, in verse 31 of chapter 1, it's very good. And then it says God rested on the seventh day. We'll talk more about that seventh day, the Sabbath day, Lord willing, as we get together next time. Thank you for being here. Again, order your workbook if you have not yet done so. Join us as we continue to seek the old things.